Howdy y'all, this is Gaming Rambles back with a top 5 Total War video. I'm sure no big YouTubers will be upset at this perfectly original idea. Just for the record, I'm just gonna lump this one with the tips, tricks, and cheese playlist because I don't really know if I'll do another top 5 video. In this video, I'm gonna rant on the top 5 worst campaign mechanics in Warhammer 2 Total War, and I'll give you my opinion on whether or not CA should change them and any tips I have to overcome them. Just to clarify, the campaign mechanic is different from the faction's starting position. Campaign mechanics are unique to each faction and include things like Imperial Authority, Grom's Cauldron, and Ickit's Workshop. I'm rating these campaign mechanics based on how much they help or hurt the player. Coming in number 5, we have the Beastman's Bestial Rage mechanic. And picking this one was actually pretty difficult. You'll see later on in the video that the next four are pretty straightforward because all of those campaign mechanics penalize the player. Before I continue, I should probably bring up some honorable mentions for 5th place. These include Chaos, simply because they don't really have one, the Empire's Imperial Authority mechanic for Carl and Gelt, and Malice Darkblade's Possession mechanic. I included those last two because both of those campaign mechanics can seriously hurt a player who doesn't know how to deal with them. The reason I didn't select these is because both of those campaign mechanics also provide a lot of benefits to the player who does know how to deal with them. Malice's Possession mechanic gives the player a lot of control over how to handle it. You can go into full possession right away to help in a suicidal battle, or you can spend some money for public order and growth benefits. I have a lot more problems with the Imperial Authority mechanic. In Okoy's stream earlier this week, he signed a peace treaty with Boris Toddbringer over the intern, and the very next turn, the Imperial Authority mechanic forced him back into war with Toddy. I just- are you- wait, wait a minute. I just peaced- you just paid me to peace out, now I have to stop him by force. Despite how frustrating this mechanic can be, it can make confederations a lot easier, and can provide several benefits if you can keep it above one. I think it's safe to say there's a strong consensus in the Warhammer community that the Beastmen need an update. Personally, I actually did like the Dark Moon dilemmas, so I hope CA keeps those in, but almost everything else about the Beastmen, from their research tree to their unit roster, could use an update. I think CA kept the old WOG mechanic for the Beastmen after the Greenskin update because they wanted these two races to be unique, but I would be very happy to see the new WOG mechanic applied to the Beastmen as well. I'm not going to get too upset about this right now, but I just want CA to know that the Warhammer community expects a Beastman overhaul in the future. I don't really have a guide for this part of the video because I seriously don't want to play Beastman as they are right now. I might come back to them after installing some mods or a future Beastman overhaul. Coming in number 4, we have Tehinduin's Prophecy of Sotek campaign mechanic. This campaign mechanic increases your upkeep for Soros Warriors and Temple Guards until you own two provinces, which can take a really long time if you don't know what you're doing. The reason this campaign mechanic didn't rank higher on the list is because it eventually replaces the upkeep penalty with a 10% physical resistance for all armies. I don't think CA should change this campaign mechanic at all because it rewards the player for persevering through a difficult start, and I actually think it's pretty awesome. I really like how this is implemented into the game. Just because something is challenging doesn't mean it needs to be changed. Now, to overcome the initial challenge in this campaign, I would recommend first recruiting your Regiment of Renown. Then, I like to head north and turn, however you say that, into a sack city. You may have to leave from time to time to defend your capital. Once you feel strong enough, you should migrate southwest and take the Sentinels of Zeti. This can be really challenging, and the auto-resolve is not going to favor you, so you're going to want to bring some heroes, perform the Rite of Sotek, and make some sacrifices to buff your army. After you have the Sentinels of Zeti, I would recommend heading north and taking the Jungles of Green Mist as your second province. Once you've got those two provinces, the game gets a lot easier. So just consolidate your territory, build up your provinces, and enjoy the rest of your campaign. Coming in number 3 and 2, we have Belagar and Skarsnik respectively. Initially, I was going to place Belagar as number 2 because Belagar's upkeep penalty is harsher than Skarsnik's campaign mechanic, but after claiming Karak 8 Peaks, Belagar gets a significant faction-wide buff, and Skarsnik doesn't really get anything. To top it off, Belagar has a much easier campaign than Skarsnik. Belagar was my first legendary campaign, and fighting Skarsnik on legendary was much easier than fighting Belagar on very hard difficulty. Once again, I don't think CA should change these campaigns. I personally like the idea of a migration campaign with a difficult start, and I like how unique it is even after all the other factions added in Warhammer 2. For my guides, I'm going to start with Belagar. The four unbreakable heroes Belagar gets are essential and super broken. In all of your battles, you'll need to corner camp with your grudge throwers and quarrelers behind Belagar and your heroes. It will be very hard for anyone in the early game to beat this army composition, and this army will be viable even in the late game. On the campaign map, start by wiping out the Broken Nose. If you want to be extra prepared for Skarsnik, you can stack 
attack Karak Buffdar, head south and occupy Zarek Zil, then head back north and use Karak Buffdar as a sack city until Skarsnik arrives. You want to make Karak Buffdar your sack city instead of Zarek Zil, because you want to be close to your capital in case there's a rebellion, the Crooked Moon mutinous Gits show up, or Skarsnik appears. To prepare for this video, I replayed a Belagar campaign on Very Hard by doing just this, and I got Belagar up to level 26, and I wiped out Skarsnik by turn 39 without manually fighting a single battle. So, I'm, I'm not even sure why I bothered making this guide. Belagar is just so much easier than Skarsnik. Once you've wiped out Skarsnik's original attack, you need to wipe him out and then head south to Karakate Peaks. As long as you use the underway on your way there, it'll be very difficult for any army to take you out. Supreme Ruler of Eight Peaks! No, you ain't! Skarsnik is much tougher. As soon as possible, you need to throw some heroes in your army, especially a river troll hag. Since the latest update makes it harder to farm rebellions, I would try and turn Fester Spike into a sack city. This way you can level up Skarsnik, level up your heroes, and get some regiments of renown before Belagar shows up. Belagar will show up from the front and the back. Make sure you use the lunatics in battle, otherwise the dwarves will run right through your goblins. Belagar must be destroyed, and he must be destroyed soon or he'll start drawing more people into war with you. Right before I wiped out Belagar, Gelt declared war on me. Thankfully, the Empire is a lot easier to fight than the Dwarves, and I managed to wipe Belagar out before I really had to deal with Gelt. Take Fort Soul to hold off an Empire invasion. Whenever you take a city, the garrison has to replenish, and this takes about 4 turns, so you want to keep Skarsnik and Fort Soul for 4 turns until the garrison is back to full health. Then it's finally time to pack your bags and head to Karak 8 Peaks. Once Belagar is defeated and you have the 8 Peaks, the campaign gets a lot easier. Coming in number one for the worst campaign mechanic in the entire game, Marcus Wolfhart's Hostility Mechanic. The way this campaign mechanic works is that after you acquire a certain amount of hostility by winning battles where you're the attacker or occupying settlements, a hostile lizardman army spawns somewhere near one of your settlements. The game tries to balance this mechanic by providing reinforcements from the Empire to assist the expedition. Unlike the other mechanics on this list, this mechanic actually starts out simple and easy to deal with in the early game, which is probably why it hasn't received that much criticism. However, where the other previous campaign mechanics begin hard and reward the player later on with faction-wide benefits, Marcus Wolfhard's hostility mechanic gets harder as the campaign progresses until it makes your campaign virtually unplayable. The hostility marker increases even if you aren't targeting Lizardmen, so you can be on the other side of the map fighting Norska and the Lizardmen will still get pissed. As you acquire more territory, you fulfill your Imperial Mandate, and this tells the game to spawn an even stronger Lizardmen army. This problem is compounded by the fact that the army spawns randomly near any one of your settlements, so as your territory increases, you are less prepared to respond to this random army. This army is so strong that the only person equipped to fight it is Marcus Wolfhart, and what do you know, he's 15 turns away fighting Marathi. The Imperial supplies are nice, don't get me wrong, but they aren't nearly enough to deal with these randomly spawning, absurdly overpowered armies. Every time one spawned, I needed a full army next to a maxed out garrison, and I would still have to fight the battle manually, and those battles were awful. In this game, there are a lot of battles you have to fight manually because the auto-resolve thinks you will lose and it turns out to be an easy victory. This was never the case with the Children of the Old Ones battles. Even with 2 to 1 odds, the crappy Lustria terrain gave the Lizardmen a huge advantage and made every single one of those battles Pyrrhic victories. I like it, Kaji. By the time I completed my Marcus Wolfhart meme video, I had virtually depleted my stockpile of Imperial reinforcements and I was so tired of the campaign, I didn't want to finish it. This campaign mechanic is so bad, it's the entire reason I made this video. This campaign brutally punishes you just for winning battles. It's literally the opposite of the Blood Kiss Vampire mechanic. I probably wouldn't get too upset if the campaign objectives were modest, but one of the factions you have to destroy is on the opposite side of the map. This campaign mechanic is horrible and CA needs to change it in a future patch. There are a lot of ways they can make it manageable. Here are three different easy solutions to fix this problem. First, they could make the hostility mechanic only trigger after battles with Lizardmen. This would make a lot of sense because the mechanic spawns a Lizardmen army. Two, they can make the hostility meter and the Imperial reinforcements disappear after you max out your Imperial mandate. I would gladly sacrifice future Imperial reinforcements to get rid of this stupid hostility meter. Or three, CA could just make the Lizardmen army spawn near the source of the aggression, so this way you actually have an army nearby to deal with it. Any one of these solutions would make this campaign far more enjoyable. My biggest piece of advice if you're going into this 
this campaign is to set your battle difficulty to easy. Trust me, if I had known just how broken this campaign mechanic was, I would have done this. If this solution is too cheesy for you, then migrate to the Sentinel's Zeti and sack the Golden Colossus over and over again to spam reinforcements from the Empire. Once you've got about 20 steam tanks in your stockpile, you're probably equipped enough to deal with any Lizardman armies that might spawn. So just rush the factions you need to destroy to get the victory conditions. Wait until Archeon appears and then use the Shield of Civilization Diplomacy bonus to sign a bunch of military alliances, and hopefully that works for you. This concludes my top 5 worst campaign mechanics list. There's probably something I missed or got wrong, so if y'all disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments. The next video is a meme video. Peace y'all.